Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Northumberland series. Northumberland is the northeastern tip of all of England. It's a unitary county containing 166 civil parishes. Let's see which one we're in today. Welcome back to Northumberland, everybody. Now, in this episode, we're starting pretty much where we left off in Cresswell last week. This is Druridge Bay, and that is Druridge Bay Beach. Very similar to the one that's a bit further down the shoreline at Cresswell. I'm sure you'll agree. Now, Druridge Bay is also the name given to this rather rugged reserve and there's a few things on this reserve just behind the sand dunes that are very interesting indeed and this is where we're starting the parish of Widrington Village Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Widrington Village is a civil parish in the county of Northumberland, which borders the North Sea. It's a tiny village, but it does cover a lot of land, taking in most of Druridge Bay. This is a part of Northumberland which is synonymous with a few regular channel topics like coal mining and wartime defences, and here we can get up close and personal with the latter. Perhaps one of the most interesting parts of this parish would be Low Chibbon Preceptory, which stands between the village and the sea. Even it has some wartime history. The village itself sits on the A1068 and has a pub and two churches. Historically, it also had a medieval tower house, Widrington Castle, where James I once stayed in 1603. Widrington was the seat of the Widrington family. In 1642, William Widrington raised forces in support of Charles I, who elevated him to the then new title of Baron Widrington. It's important to make the distinction between Widrington and its close neighbour, which is why this one is named Widrington Village. We'll talk more about that as we walk around. Notable people from here include the writer Anne Heppel Dickinson, the footballer Bob Morton and James Bulmer Johnson, a World War I British Army officer and recipient of the Victoria Cross. Let's see what else this corner of Northumberland has got for us. We begin our trek around Widrington Village at Druridge Bay because the parish boundaries extend eastwards all the way to the North Sea coast. We'll get a proper look at the village in a short while. This area is mighty interesting. As discussed briefly at the end of the Cresswell episode last week, Druridge Bay was considered during wartime to be one of England's most vulnerable areas. It was considered to be a likely target for German forces. To combat that, defences were built. The bay is littered with pillboxes situated amongst the sand dunes. Here's an example of one. There was also a continuous length of anti-tank blocks and ditches to hinder any possible invasion. These features were established in 1940. Of course, everything that's here has long since been abandoned, but this was still a little risky walking through these dunes because from 1941, anti-tank beach scaffolding and minefields were added here. You could so very easily get lost among these dunes because they're uh, they're very prominent in places. Where I'm stood here, you can see 
I'm surrounded by hilltops. <laughs> so you don't really know which way is where. It's a good job I've got a map on me because otherwise I'd be a bit stuck, wouldn't I? Not all of the pillboxes on Druridge Bay are hidden. Some were purposely hidden in plain sight. This is Hemscott Hill between Druridge and Cresswell. This building was also a pillbox, but you would likely never know. This is a special type of pillbox designed to look like a ruined farm building. It's right next to the road, so I took the opportunity to have a peek inside. Believe it or not, this is a Grade 2 listed structure, because these are rare. Being able to get inside one of these is quite unique. I wonder who might well have stood here during the war using these windows. As well as these defences, there were a number of coastal batteries between here and Amble, some nine miles to the north. Most of the North Sea defences now only survive within Druridge Bay's dunes or on the foreshore because local open cast mining removed a lot more defences further inland. Now, let's get off this hill and into the village. So now we're in Widrington Village and it's important to make the distinction between Widrington Village and the other Widrington, which is Widrington Station and Stobswood because there are two parishes with the name Widrington. This is the very smaller version. Uh, we're starting here outside a church. This is a United Reformed Church. It's one of two religious buildings we'll see on this walk around and uh, we'll also see a pub and a few other interesting bits and bobs. It's not a very big place so uh, let's get on and do it, eh Nicky? See what we can find. In fact, it's only a recent change. The parish was renamed from Widrington to Widrington Village in 2003. Anyway, Widrington United Reformed Church was originally founded in 1765 as Widrington Presbyterian Church. 2015 was their 250th anniversary. Here's a bus stop. Widrington is served by two buses. These are the X18 and the X20. From here, you can reach as far afield as Newcastle to the south and to Annick in the north. Next up, it's Garth Lane. And on the end of Garth Lane, we find this building. It's a wooden hall owned by the local Women's Institute. And this appears to be the main community building in the village. Widrington has no other village hall. On the other side of the WI building is a parish notice board and Nikki did the honours with the TBI card. Now we're heading for a roundabout and on it, we will find the village's one and only public house, the Widrington Inn. So it might be a small place, Widrington, but it does have a pub. That's the Widrington Inn over there. I'm just gonna cross over when this car's come around the roundabout. I don't wanna get flattened. Hold on, oh, he's turning around. Oh, that's helpful. Isn't it illegal to do that? Don't know. <laughs> anyway, crossover. Here's the Widrington Inn. Hiding away behind the trees. Looks like a nice place and it's open as well. The rest of Widrington Village is a neat little circle formed of mainly two roads. The one we're on now and the rest of Garth Lane. Widrington has a nice mix of housing styles all told. This is Regency Close laid out in a neat little square. This is an old school which has been transformed into houses, now named School Row. Normally I can find things about old schools pretty easily, but my usual websites let me down here. This one seems to have pretty much nothing about it out there. On the end of School Row we find a post box, and this is a notable one. This is only the third Victorian post box we've ever found on our travels, once again signified by the letters VR. It was once red, but it's now been painted black. See this row of houses here? That's Priory View, and the clue is most definitely in the name. It's a reference to Low Chibbon Preceptory, which is in a ruinous state located in fields to the east of the village. That's coming later. So one advantage to walking around as opposed to driving around places is that you sometimes realise there are better views elsewhere in the village. Definitely a better view of the school there, right Nicky? Mm. Next is this property which has a tall industrial-like chimney. This used to be the country barn farm shop and coffee shop. It was a quaint old-fashioned farm cafe that sold good food and a few gifts. Locals tell me it was a delight to visit, but it's now closed. That can be seen from a street called Castle Mound, a reference to Widrington Castle, the former medieval tower house and castle of which only earthworks now remain. The site of the castle is immediately to the south of this street. 
Presumably, Garth Lane's name is a reference to the Castle Garth, the garden which would have been associated with it. The property was owned by the Widrington family from the 12th century, and it was crenellated in 1341. It was rebuilt twice, once in the early 17th century as a manor house and again in 1772. It caught fire in 1777 and was finally demolished in 1862. The old smithy, by the way, can be found on Garth Lane. It's at the top of that drive. So we've completed the main circuit. Nikki's just spotted another notice board on the back of the bus stuff I filmed earlier, so another card is going on that. And our next job is to walk back down the road we started with towards the church, which is hiding away behind this white house here and the trees you can see. So let's go and investigate that next. So here we have the entrance to the Grade 1 listed Parish Church of Holy Trinity. This was built in the late 12th century and remodelled and extended in the 14th century, with later modifications in the 19th century. In the grounds you'll find the village's war memorial, which takes the form of a cross. This is a World War I memorial only, and it was unveiled in 1920 by Colonel Taylor, DSO of Dilston Hall. At the time of making this video back in October, the church's Facebook page stated that it currently has no vicar. Hopefully that's changed now. Even so, services carry on every week at half past nine on Sunday mornings. We found a Commonwealth war grave here. This isn't him, but Widrington was the birthplace of James Bulmer Johnson, who received the Victoria Cross. In 2018, a memorial was erected to him in Widrington Station. So we were just about to leave the cemetery when we noticed this tree which has got some yellow ribbons on it. Now, we didn't know what yellow stood for, so we had a quick Google, and apparently a yellow ribbon is for suicide prevention awareness, which fits really, seeing as we're in a cemetery. Yes, and today's public service announcement, because it's been a while, I have to say, is that if you are having suicidal thoughts or feeling of harm in yourself or others, reach out to your local mental health team, your local crisis team, your GP, dial NHS Direct, dial 999 if things are severe here in the UK. And the best bit about that is it will cost you nothing. Look after yourselves, look after your mental health, and, uh, you know, don't let's be putting um, ribbons on trees in your memory. With the walk complete, we headed off towards Low Chibbon Preceptory. This stands in a field between Widrington and the coast. This was first mentioned in records in 1313, and it was believed to already be in ruins by 1338. It consists of buildings and foundations arranged around a central courtyard. The southeast side is occupied by the remains of a former chapel, whilst the southwest side is formed by a virtually intact 16th century dower house. Dower houses were built for widows on their late husband's estate. Here at Low Chibbon, the Dower House was built by Sir John Widrington, who in 1553 acquired the site. The whole complex was originally surrounded by a moat, but open cast mining put paid to that as well as the war defences. Speaking of those though, the preceptory used to have a pillbox of its own. This was removed in 1990, but the gun loop has been retained. Low Chibbon remains a scheduled ancient monument. That was an interesting little adventure. Not the, uh, the most uh, accessible of places, um, but even so, I think that was still worth the effort because you don't often see uh, a place like that, do you? Not on this channel anyway. Most of the time it's on private land and you can't get up close to things like that. So uh, yeah, that was, that was worth it. Now, to finish off, we've got an old colliery to see. So we'll head towards that to finish off Widrington Village. To finish proceedings, here we're to the west of the village where we're talking coal. In the distance over there is the site of the huge Steadsburn open cast mine where over a million tonnes of coal were extracted between 2007 and 2011. It's now been redeveloped into Widrington Moor Lake. When it was operational, the road between Widrington Village and Chevington Moor had to be diverted to the south. Before the open cast mine existed though, this area was already a colliery. It was the site of the former Widrington Colliery, which was sunk in 1869. It was formed of two pits named Isabella Pit and Sisters Pit. It was initially owned by William Barkus, and then from the 1880s, the Widrington Coal Company. 
The railway line which once served the pit, known as a mineral spur, once ran here. It wasn't a huge colliery compared to some in the area. In 1896 there were 242 people employed here, 197 below the ground and 45 on the surface. And there you have it, that is the parish of Widrington Village and I will return to Northumberland at some point and cover the other Widrington, that's Widrington Station and Stobswood which is a, a lot bigger than this place. Time for me to move on to my next one here in Northumberland and it's still, the sun's still shining but there are, there's the odd spot of rain in the air now so I'm hoping it, the heavens don't open otherwise I might look like a little bit of a drowned rat by the time I get to the end of the next one. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, this has been the parish of Widrington Village and I'm out.